which is a, a very high percentage. And which is, I think, a little bit more than what you have uh, said about the... Where the experts come from? Can you give a very brief introduction to the experts? The purpose of this report was not to say how many deaths or how many cancers or deaths caused by cancer are expected. The purpose of this report was saying, looking at the exposure and the doses to which people have been exposed, what is the risk that we can expect as an increase over the baseline one or the so-called natural one. And I think this is more human than trying to predict how many people will die from cancer. The other reason why we were not using cancer mortality figures, but rather incidents, is because, as you know, most of the cancers can now be treated, and therefore there will not mortality associated. So we prefer to look at the incidents because this will collect better data and properly more comprehensive, and not just looking at the mortality because then you will be missing incidents on certain cancers that will not cause mortality. At the time of the accident. What the report shows that for the most part of uh, Japan, there is no increased cancer risk expected as a consequence of the Fukushima accident. What it does show is that in the areas most affected in the Fukushima prefecture, there may be an increased risk of cancer and in particular of thyroid cancer and leukemia. What we estimated was what this incremental increase of additional cancer risk is above the background cancer risk that already exists in the population. And so this report provides some level of reassurance to big parts of the population in Japan and it helps really focus on the areas and the population of biggest concern and it helps to target monitoring and public health actions and interventions.